Hi, welcome to West 57. I'm Steve Croft. Picture a no man's land with broken windows, dark abandoned buildings, no law and order. There are carefully demarcated areas controlled by rival bands of armed militia fighting over the rubble. Nearly every night there's sniper fire. It sounds like Beirut, but in fact it's America. A creature of state, local, and federal government. The product of bad politics, failed policy, and official neglect. It exists, unseen except by those who live there, a stone's throw away from some of the most valuable real estate in our nation's third largest city. What's it like here? What's the neighborhood like? Like a bad man. Dangerous? Yes. Can you tell when somebody's going to shoot? Yes. They just grab their gun and just start shooting. One time they came over this way, and then they saw this lady, and they, she said something to her, to them, and then... They had, she had a big hole in her head when they killed her. They shot her? I don't know what they did. Did you see her? Yes. How often do you hear gunshots? Um, too often. Johnny Shannon is 10 years old. He lives within walking distance of Chicago's Gold Coast, but it's several worlds away. His home is Cabrini Green, a name at once both saintly and sylvan. It is neither. When I first came here, it reminded me of Vietnam. It's been called a city within a city, the most notorious public housing project in America. Dennis Davis patrols it for the Chicago police. Drive straight through. Built in the 40s and 50s, it was supposed to provide safe, inexpensive, integrated housing for people trying to save money to buy a house. Today, it's 70 acres of no man's land, void of legitimate enterprise, with its own laws and its own language. Now, this building is called The Rock. The Rock? Yeah, The Rock. What do you call it, The Rock? It's like The Rock of Gibraltar. You know, it's, it's there, you can't get to it, and it's the strongest thing in Cabrini. There's normally a sentry. He's standing right there in front of 1150 now. What's he looking for? Police. They're selling drugs from the lobby. He will see us when we make the turn. And if they're dealing, he'll just walk away into the building. And once they get into the building, that's it. We won't find them. Cabrini is part of the worst public housing system in the country. So bad that two years ago, the federal government threatened to take it over. The Chicago Housing Authority doesn't even know who lives in its buildings. But 100,000 people are waiting to get in. The only structure is provided by the gangs who marked their turf with spray paint and set up sniper posts in high-rise buildings. The working poor Cabrini was designed for have long since fled, leaving the desperate alongside the helpless. And I don't give a damn how hard you try to teach your kids to walk a straight line. The game fingers are the role model for these children in this neighborhood. Sixty percent of the households here are headed by single women. Patricia Welch is one of them, trying to raise three boys. Two-thirds of Cabrini's residents are children. What's it like living here? Hell. Why hell? Because you don't know if a bullet going to come through your window. You don't know why you're going to the store, if you're going to be shot at, or your children be hurt in any kind of way. When was the last time they were shooting here? Well, my building last night. Do you think your mother worries about you living here? Yes. Why? Because um, when you go outside, there's bad, bad things happening out there. What's the closest you've ever come to getting hurt by the gangbangers? Well, one time I was playing in the playground, they just started shooting back and forth. What do you do when you hear shooting? I run. We're in a battle. Uh, we're in a battle with the gangs for those youngsters. Bob Martin heads the Chicago Intervention Network, a city agency that works with gangs. We have what we call um, marginal youth, or what some gang members call trophies. Why trophies? Uh, they are 
children that are born out of wedlock that um, the fathers oftentimes brag about how many uh, youngsters they have, uh, how many sons they have, and uh, the code word for son is trophy. That is the next wave of gang members coming up. And when you hear gang members say, you'll never stop the gangs, uh, you can't stop us. We are a nation. That's what they're referring to. When you think of Cabrini, you can look right out my window and see it. It's only six blocks, but it's a cancer that can spread into every neighborhood in the city of Chicago. Cabrini first gained notoriety in 1981, when then Chicago Mayor Jane Byrne briefly took an apartment there. I'm going to straighten out project living in this city, because by allowing it, we can harm the whole city, and I'm not going to have it. By most accounts, Byrne spent one or two days a week there for six months, and then Cabrini once again fell into neglect. Today, the housing authority is $30 million in debt. The building codes are not being enforced, and the elevators, when they work, are called the most dangerous form of public transportation in Chicago. Do the gangs control the elevators? Yeah, they, they do. Yeah, they can control them. At one time, they, uh, as a matter of fact, they were hiding, they were hiding up here. And if a young lady got on the elevator, she would jump down and, you know, do what she wanted to do to her. They used to hide guns up there. This is uh, 11. That's 11? Right. Okay. On it's high pretty high dark out there. Yeah. Yeah. You see, that's another thing about these elevators, because you never know what's, what's going to happen when the door opens. Just watch, watch my back. Where'd he get shot? Well, he probably got shot somewhere around here. Last year, 200 people were shot or stabbed in Cabrini. Eight violent crimes for every 100 people. How long ago did he get shot? Oh, just a, a real short time ago. He was shot by some fellows across the way here as he crossed the field. Did you know this kid? Oh, yeah, for about four years. In five years, brother Bill Tomes has seen 65 of his friends shot or stabbed. He's an emissary from the Archbishop of Chicago, a peacekeeping force of one, who roams Cabrini at night, helping women and children negotiate the free fire zones. Are you trying to save souls here? No, we're trying to uh, show God's love for people. You're trying to keep people alive. Oh, I think we're trying to keep people alive, yeah. Those are pretty low expectations. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> keep somebody alive. Y'all be cool, man. Y'all be kept. Uh, most of the kids, for example, have been shot. Almost all of them have been shot. Yeah, it's my brother. They killed my brother. You see? Is violent, uh, sudden violent death just sort of accepted here, something that happens? Well, it, it's expected to happen in this kind of environment, and, and you never know when it's going to. It could be right now. In fact, it was 15 minutes later. Brother Bill and the paramedics were called to attend to a stabbing victim. But they failed to achieve their modest goal. Her son died in the elevator. Who controls this area? Does the police control? Yeah, we control it. Yes. You're serious? I'm serious. I believe the gangs are in control of Cabrini. And any time uh, they nickname uh, the uh, plaza area as a, a shooting gallery, then I don't think the police or CHA management is in control of the property. That assessment comes not from some alderman or candidate running for local office, but from the latest director of the Chicago Housing Authority, Vincent Lane. We've talked to residents at different housing projects in Chicago who describe uh, the buildings they live in or the projects that they live in as uh, the graveyard, the DMZ, uh, death row, Beirut. That's right. Accurate descriptions? Accurate des descriptions. Uh, with the one exception today, and that's at a, a building, uh, 2417 West Adams.
When I got in here, I was so thrilled about the apartment. Two bathrooms, four big bedrooms, roomy. I could fix it up like a home, you know. When Evelyn Walker first moved to 2417 West Adams, she thought she'd died and gone to heaven. But that was before she found out it was called the graveyard, and with good reason. And I mean, a lot of bullets come in. I'm not talking about one or two bullets. Into the apartment. It was attacked from every angle. One day it might be the back. Next day it might be the front. Sometimes it'd be from back and front. What did you do to try and protect yourself? Well, we stopped eating at the dining room table for one thing. Uh, we got a big closet in the back. We stayed in that closet basically when uh, shooting would occur. My children were actually trained like maybe men would be in the service to take cover. Uh, hit the floor. I just came over. That was before Vince Lane and the Chicago Housing Authority announced a plan to take the projects back from the gangs with police sweeps, security gates, and ID checks. The first step was to get rid of the squatters. Federal agents and Chicago police forcibly removed anyone who wasn't on the housing authority's list. Who's Deion Wilson? That's me. I'm Who's cousin. Calvin Gibson? That's me. You want to go check the school? It's really no different than uh, when uh, you and I were in school, where uh, two or three bullies controlled the whole cl classroom. I proposed to turn that around. I want to give the residents the support so that they can throw the bullies out. You've got security people all over the building now. Well, that's for now. That's for now. But what about when security leaves? Is the you think security's going to leave? I think security is going to leave eventually. I, uh, I admire your confidence, but I think you need to note that you are the eighth person to have this job in the last five years. There were a lot of employees when I got here said I wouldn't last three months. How long have you been here? Six months. That was in December, and Vince Lane is still there. But there are some, including the Urban League and the Mayor's Advisory Council, who believe the solution to high-rise ghettos like Cabrini-Green may be to level them. The only hope for kids like Johnny Shannon, escape. What are you going to do if the gangbangers come up to you and say, we want you to join? I'll tell them no. What if they insist? I'll still tell them no, I won't get it. Join. Would you like to live somewhere else? Yes. Where would you like to live? In Beverly Hills. In Beverly Hills. Why in Beverly Hills? Because it's not like no violence. There are kids that are saveable in the Cabrini Green area who want to get out of the gangs, but they say, what do I do? Where do I go? You've got to have a dream to turn your life around, to shoot for something. How are you going to dream if you haven't seen anything? just had a gang fight between members of the 500 West Oak building and the 11 to 17.